All right, what's going on, guys? So today, essential movements. We're talking about power punches. So we're going to go over the basic body mechanics of your standard boxing punches, okay? So there are a lot of um, nuances and variations to these punches, but we're just going to cover mostly the basics today because we're just looking at um, body mechanics in this series, okay? Okay, so we're going to start most of these exercises from our learning stance, right? So it's basically completely squared up. And we're doing this because if you've seen any of the other videos in this series, this is the easiest way to learn the body mechanics, okay? So you can really isolate the mechanics of these punches and then they will transfer over to your regular stance. You'll feel more fluid when you do it from your regular stance, okay? So we had a video in this series talking about the jab and the, the mechanics of the jab. But uh, so we're not gonna cover that one too much today. So today it's going to be mostly the power punches, right? So the first one is the rear-handed straight punch. Okay, so from my learning stance, I just kind of pull my hands up here, get this basic kind of boxing guard, bend my knees a little bit, adjust my feet. But I'm pretty much, I'm basically completely squared up, very neutral. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is going to help me really focus on the weight shift, shifting my weight. It's probably the most important move in boxing is this weight shift. Most of your punches and defense, your steps, almost everything comes back to this, right? And you see um, a lot of people don't always get this movement down, right? I talk about that a lot, how um, a lot of people, their head kind of stays straight up and down when they're moving around and punching, and they don't really have this weight shift, right? So we can exaggerate it a little bit, Learn your balance, right? But for the most part, we don't want to go too far over the knee because we're losing balance in that position, right? You can test your balance just by doing that for demonstrations, right? But in actuality, this is a very, this can be a very subtle thing where my head only moves an inch or two, right? But my weight is shifting from the hips and feet. And I got these little pivots going on just to assist in this weight shift. As I cross the center line, I dip a little bit, right? So it's this kind of bend in the knee motion. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you're standing straight up and down like this, you don't have balance going backwards. That's how people get knocked down when they get caught in this position, right? But if you have a little bend in your knee, it gives you a little bit more of a chance to survive uh, getting knocked down if you have a little bit of stability in this center line position here. So having that little bend in the knee is important, especially as we cross that center line when we're shifting our weight, okay? All right, so the straight punch. I pull my hands up, I shift my weight, I'm gonna throw a right straight, rear straight, boom. So I shift my weight and turn my hips like this. Keep my arm relaxed, and it flies straight out. Boom. Boom, okay? So you can pause at this position to make sure you feel strong here. Adjust your balance a little bit. You might have to take your lead foot a half step forward. But you should feel nice and balanced in the position that you would be in when you land the punch, okay? So we're aiming straight out with the two knuckles. You turn your hand over and you're aiming with the big two knuckles on your rear hand, okay? So, we can do the same thing from our neutral stance. We'll practice the left straight. So same concept. My sh I shift my weight from my left foot over to my right. I keep my arm and shoulder relaxed. I let the energy travel up. And then my arm flies out, nice and relaxed. Okay? Okay. So you get a lot of your power from that weight shift and that turn. Okay? We'll talk about this later in the video. You get a lot of power just from this motion. Right? Um, there's the earlier volumes. We talked about the drop step. That's assisting the power of this shot. Right? So if you, as you shift and turn, you drop your weight a little bit. You add a lot more power to the shot. Then the trigger step, what I call the trigger step, 
is there's an upward springing kind of motion that you can use with the same kind of motion. You just pop up, you can, almost like a little hop. So a lot of Cuban and Soviet guys use that trigger step, that kind of upward motion. Tank Davis is another guy, Mike Tyson. These guys use the kind of jumping almost motion to add power in their shots, okay? But that's, you know, that's an earlier video in the series. We're just basically focusing on the mechanics of the punches in this one. But we'll talk a little bit more about generating power later, okay? Okay, so once you can comfortably do this from your learning stance, right? So don't just twist your hips. We gotta get that weight shift. You know, watch, pay attention to where your head's going. It's gonna be moving a little bit, crossing that center line here slightly. And you can bend your knee when you get over here just a little bit to give you a more solid base. So you can alternate straight punches like that from your learning stance. It's a really great, great drill. And, um, or you can isolate one right so if you are right-handed the left one might feel a little uncomfortable so spend some time with that one so if, once you can do these things from the learning stance I don't want to go over this every single time but for all these punches you can practice them from your learning stance then you can do the walking drill where from your learning stance you're going to stay pretty much neutral and you're going to isolate one punch so I'm going to think about the right straight and I'm gonna walk forward, throwing that punch. And then I'm gonna walk backwards, okay? So the coordination switches when you go backwards. As you go forward, I shift my weight from my right foot to my left foot to throw the punch. As I go backwards, it's the opposite. My right foot and right hand go together. Like that. Okay, so this is another drill that we've talked about in an earlier lesson, and this is a really great drill. You should be doing this all the time. Even if you've been boxing for, for a really long time, you wanna always come back to these body mechanics. And this really enforces the synchronization between your hands and feet, okay? So you can do that with all of these punches, right? I probably won't go over it for every single one, uh, just to keep this video as short as possible. But that's the basic drill. You're walking. You're taking steps forward, right? I'm not really setting the stance. I'm still thinking neutral. It's all body mechanics. And as I'm doing that, I'm shifting my weight to cause my steps. I'm exaggerating that weight shift. And then I add my punches. One at a time. Focus on one at a time. Especially do this with your hooks, okay? Boom. Okay? Okay. So once you, you know, spend some time with each punch stationary in your learning stance, walking in your learning stance, then, you know, you can start working it from your actual stance, okay? You just shadow box around, throw in the punch, pause at the end, check your balance, right? Think about how you'll move after this punch. You can roll out, right? You can step, shuffle, right or you can step pivot right so think about how you're going to move after these punches as well from your stance okay oh and don't forget train southpaw and orthodox okay so from this learning stance it's going to help you get more coordinated so you're um, going to feel more ambidextrous right it's great for that but you also need to train both stances even if you don't plan to fight from both stances you need to be able to at least get out of a bad situation from the stance that you are not used to, okay? So it feels weird at first, but it's really great for your coordination, okay? All right, so this straight punch to the body. So this is very similar to the mechanics of the regular straight punch, but there's gonna be a, a step and a dip, right? So you, the bigger your step, the lower you're gonna get right so this one's kind of hard to train from your learning stance because you you have to kind of take a step forward you could kind of practice just dipping right like this and throwing the punch but in reality you want to take a step 
and that's going to give you, you're going to use less leg muscle to get low. And you just want to get low enough to land that punch. So your arm goes straight out, right? So do that from uh, both stances. All right, so the one, two. So you want to think of the one, two as not two separate punches, okay? This is a, this is a very uh, common thing that people are taught. But the old school one, two, you look at guys like Joe Lewis, and the one, two is two punches thrown from the same motion, okay? So if you think about shifting your weight like this, if I shift over here and just swing my arms like that, that's kind of the idea behind the one, two. You're thinking about throwing the rear hand, and as you turn, you flick out, kind of just a distracting kind of jab, flick like that. Okay? So the rhythm is not one, two, one, two, it's one, two. Okay? So the, the punches are closer together, and the power shot is the important shot. The jab on the one, two is just kind of a distracting kind of flick to slap slap the guard, slap down the hand, um, hit him in the nose, distract him. It's just a kind of distracting punch. The, the, the punch you're really thinking about is that rear hand. So to practice that one, two, you can shift your weight side to side and just let your arms fly out, right? And then shift just from one side. So if I'm doing a southpaw, kind of one, two, I'm going to shift my weight over to my left leg and as I turn and shift to the right leg I just let my arms relax and fly out and then from my stance it's the same kind of thing where as I get ready I might throw some normal kind of jabs and when I get ready to throw the one two it's a flick out and then the rear hand comes right behind it okay all right so quick note on the straight punches you want to push your shoulder out, okay? So you, talk, um, you hear a lot of coaches talking about um, picking the shoulder up or the shoulder comes up to protect your chin on a straight punch. Yeah, you want that. Ideally, um, you don't always have the range to get that, okay? So this is something you practice, but um, you're not always going to be at that full extension range, okay? But what this is, is you extend your shoulder out okay and then the shoulder will naturally come up and protect your chin so you don't pick the shoulder up that's gonna cause tension and break your kinetic chain all right so you're gonna push your shoulder out so you might not be used to that motion so you're gonna have to practice this and this is something you practice slowly and then it eventually happens. But like I was saying, you don't always have the range to do this. Sometimes you're too close on your straight punches, so you don't get that full extension. But it's, it's something that you should practice anyways because you want to practice this perfect punch, which would be all the way full extension. You get a few more inches of reach, and you get that shoulder coming up to protect your chin, okay? All right, so with the straight punch mechanics... There are variations, you know, and there's, you know, there's probably a lot more punches. But like I was saying, this is about body mechanics and basics, so we're not going to go into every kind of rear-handed power shot you can throw. But, you know, you got your straight, but you can also have a looping rear hand, right? So this is something that you see, like, Floyd Mayweather use a lot, and it can be very, um, it's a very good punch, all right? But again, if you only throw a looping right hand, you're going to eventually get countered. Okay, but if your opponent has a really good guard and you're having a hard time getting past it, you can loop around the guard with a rear-handed punch. So the mechanics are pretty much the same, but your fist, instead of going straight out, it goes in this arc. So it goes from your chin in this arc and lands about on your center line after you've turned, okay? So, like I was saying, you know, don't... If that's all you can throw, that would be bad, right? You want to have some variation, and you want to have a, you know, you want to be unpredictable. But it's a very good punch, and it adds a lot of power and can be uh, hard for your opponent to see. If he's using a high guard like this, he's open around the sides. You can loop a punch around his guard, okay? 
All right, so we've talked about the rear straight power punch. And um, a term that's kind of interchangeably used is the cross. But in, in reality, they're two different punches. You have a straight punch and a cross. So the reason it is called a cross is because it crosses over your opponent's jab or his uh, straight power punch, okay? So imagine this is the end of my opponent's range or his jab. A straight punch would go straight, straight at the target, and a cross would cross over that target. So it's like a middle ground between a hook and a straight punch. It's not quite straight. It's got a curve to go over my opponent's jab, right? So your straight punch looks like this. Cross looks like that. It's almost more like an overhand, right? So then we have the overhand, which is like a big looping, kind of um, almost like you're throwing a ball kind of punch. And there's different ways to throw that one. You know, you can turn the knuckles all the way over, or you can try to do a big, almost like the, uh, the traditional looping right. But this one kind of goes more upwards and then down right so you might have to take a bigger step a bigger dip for the overhand okay but the mechanics are pretty much the same okay so one more straight punch this is called a jolt so this is a punch that uh, Jack Dempsey talks about and it's basically a straight punch but you don't turn the fist over you keep your fist vertical and you're landing with the three knuckles Okay, you're aiming with the ring finger knuckle so that all three knuckles land flat, okay? So this is gonna be something you're gonna wanna train for a little bit, right? You're gonna have to do some knuckle push-ups. Do them on the three knuckles, do them on the two knuckles. You're gonna notice that the three knuckles feel more stable in your wrist, right? These three knuckles, they land more solid. You use more of uh, your, your bone structure than muscle, so you get a lot more power with a lot less effort, okay? So I like to use this one, punching up. Um, if you have to punch up at an opponent, it's hard to do with a straight punch, but you can use a kind of triggering, trigger step motion where you pop up, and if you use this three knuckle landing, you can land a straight punch higher up if you use this three knuckle landing on this, this jolt punch, right? So you, again, you keep your fist vertical, you might turn it over a little bit, just enough to land flushly, but you're not doing a full palm facing down turnover like you would do to land on the two knuckles. So if you notice, if I wanted to throw a two knuckle landing normal straight, it can go straight out like this. I can maybe go up, I can maybe uh, punch upward a little bit, but there's a point where I end up just landing on my fingers, right? So with this three knuckle landing, I can punch way up way higher up with the three knuckle landing and it still lands flush, okay? So the mechanics are pretty much the same as a straight punch. I might use a little bit more of a trigger step, kind of a upward motion, but the hip turn, the weight shift and everything, and everything else is the same. But again, this allows me to land straight punches up at a taller opponent that will push his head up and back and it's very um it's 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 almost like an uppercut right so it pushes the head up and back you can uh off balance him very easy okay okay so then one more demonstration so you can see the differences of these rear handed punches you got your regular traditional straight punch straight out from the shoulder right you got your jolt upwards three knuckle landing you got your cross so, so he throws a jab I'm gonna slip that jab and throw kind of a diagonal kind of a middle ground between a hook and a uh, and a straight punch aiming with the two knuckles right so then you have the looping right so maybe his guards really good and I just loop a loop a rear hand almost like a really long hook around his guard, right? Then the last one is the overhand where maybe he throws a rear hand and I'm gonna dip 
I take a bigger step, bigger dip, and more of a loop. Maybe even have a little bit of a downward arc. And um, that's your overhand, okay? Okay, the lead hook. So this punch is, um, there's different ways to throw it, there's different ways to land it. But the standard kind of lead hook, from our learning stance, you shift your weight over to the left foot to throw a left hook, and then I shift my weight back to the right foot. So that's really important. A lot of people don't do any kind of weight shift on the left hook. A lot of beginners especially, they just kind of, um, they pivot and turn their hips, but their weight's staying straight up and down. So when you turn and shift, your weight comes back to your rear foot, and it can even drop down like this, adding kind of a drop step. Adds a lot of power, right? But you don't want to throw every left hook as hard as you can, which is why you don't always see people pivoting on the lead foot for the left hook, right? It's a situational kind of thing. But we'll kind of talk about that a little bit right now. So as you see, if I shift over to the lead foot, throw my left hook, my right foot pivots more, or at least first. Then as my weight comes back, then I get the pivot on the lead foot, right? So my arm is about 90 degrees. It's a mid-range, short-range shot, okay? I don't turn my hand over at this, at this range. I'm aiming with the three knuckles. It's gonna give you a stronger landing. And your, your arm is gonna be behind your fist. It gives you a lot more power, okay? So this is a hook to the head, right? So the weight is shifting from the lead leg for the lead hook back to the rear foot, okay? So that's from my learning stance. I'll do the same thing for my right hook. If I was southpaw, my lead right hook. Again, my back foot turns first. And then I get that pivot on the lead foot at the end, okay? At the end of the punch. Okay, so you see a lot of times people do not um, pivot on the lead foot for the lead hook. And like I was saying, it's just it's situational. A lot of times you, you do these pivots working these body mechanics, but when you're actually in your stance and you need to throw a lead hook, it might be a very small pivot. It might be no pivot at all, okay? You might only pivot the back foot. It kind of depends on the situation, how much power you're adding the shot and where you are throwing the shot, okay? So if we're talking about body hooks, they're thrown with the mechanics, mostly the mechanics of an uppercut. So you go on the lead foot and you do this kind of, this kind of upward motion here. Your rear foot can pivot and you get this kind of turning motion with your hips and shoulders. You throw that hook to the body. Again, I'm aiming with the three knuckles. But I would not pivot on the front foot on that punch. Most likely not, unless I was turning all the way back. But to do that, I would probably have to step with my rear foot and go out in that direction, okay? So think about, how would you move after you throw the left hook, right? So from your learning stance, you can lean over, throw your left hook, and then think about what would you do after that, right? Typically we're taught to roll and go out to the left, right? But you can actually get a lot of power if you step. You step forward with your rear foot and kind of angle off and throw this kind of, it's almost like a walking hook. And a lot of people aren't used to that punch and it adds a lot of power because you're shifting your weight into this big step here off into an angle then you can turn from there so that was from the learning stance from your actual stance my orthodox stance for my lead hook I you know I might slip throw a right hand and then I gotta either just throw the hook I can just throw the hook like this if 
I shift all the way back to my rear foot, it's gonna be hard to roll. So if I shift all the way to the rear foot, I might shuffle off this way, right? If I shift all the way to the rear foot, I might have to dip and then I can roll, right? If I stay on the front foot here, the lead foot, and I throw my hook and I don't pivot, or maybe I only pivot a little bit, but my weight does not go all the way back. It stays over the lead foot. Then I can dip down here and roll out this way, right? A lot of times you gotta keep in mind that this is a short range punch, medium to short range. So for this hook, a lot of times you're gonna have to come forward with it, okay? So that, um, that leads into the kind of gazelle hook mechanics that we'll talk about in a little bit, okay? Okay, so make sure you practice your hooks from your learning stance, left and right, right? And like before, you can walk them forward, take one at a time, walk them backwards, right? And then you also want to practice them from your fighting stance. Wow. Orthodox and southpaw, okay? So you can do that with all these punches. Um, so, I'll, I, you know, keep that in mind. I don't want to keep going over that over and over again. But it's very important for the hooks because, like I was saying, there's a lot of different kind of ways to land the hook. There's different kind of um, body mechanics depending on what you're doing what you plan to do after the hook okay if you want to move off to the right here you might do the big shift you might even do the step you know you got to shift your weight over here and do your shuffle or roll or whatever but you got to kind of get used to these mechanics of the hook and what you're going to do afterwards okay and that just comes from practice so spend some time with your hooks from your learning stance okay so the hook is a medium to short range punch, like I was saying, but there are longer variations, okay? This longer hook is a little different than a normal left hook. And the reason is because to land uh, without hitting your fingers or doing kind of a slap at this long range, I can't use my three knuckles and keep my fist vertical like this anymore. What I have to do is I have to turn my thumb down almost to the ground and aim with the two knuckles, okay? But the problem with that is now my shoulder, my elbow, and my fist are not really being supported, right? Because it's going out like a straight punch, but the direction of impact is going to be putting force going this way. So when I was younger, I used to be able to do this, no problem. But as the older I get, the more and more I can kind of feel that that could be a big problem especially if you have boxing gloves on, okay? You see this punch a lot in MMA because the gloves are smaller, you get a more precise landing with those two knuckles, okay? And um, it's just, I think it's an easier punch to throw if you're using like small bag gloves or MMA gloves, but with boxing gloves, that's kind of a rounded surface, right? It's a little heavier on your hand. It affects your shoulder a little bit more, your elbow a little bit more, okay? So with boxing gloves on, uh, this is typically not thrown with power. It's more of a snapping kind of just annoying punch, okay? So don't try to land this punch with a lot of power, right? It's more of a snapping kind of punch. And you're aiming with these two knuckles, right? So the, the glove you're gonna be wearing can affect how you're gonna end up landing that punch. So be very careful with this punch. Um, like I was saying, don't try to land it with power. And, uh, but you can have a lot of success with it. Um, I used to use it in sparring all the time. I kind of bait the opponent and I would just kind of snap in kind of like a, uh, almost like a Fedor Emelianenko from MMA. Just kind of whip it in like that. And I wouldn't really put anything on it. I would just basically be doing my pivot, but I'm snapping, whipping my arm out. And uh, you know, I go like that and step off. And <laughs> almost every time, uh, my sparring partner would be like, whoa, like rattled because not because of the power so much, just because of it, how surprising it is. They're not expecting to get hit with a hook from that range and how fast it is. It kind of snaps in, hits the side of the head, and they just, they get stunned, okay? 
So it's a good punch. So practice it very carefully, okay? The basic mechanics are from your learning stance. You shift over almost like you're throwing a left straight, but you keep your arm relaxed and you kind of whip it out. Whip or snap into the target, right? So your punch is going out from your chin, goes out and ends on the center line. Most of your punches will do the same thing, right? They go out and they kind of end on your center line, right? So you think of this little arc. So practice the, the um, you know, practice both hands. So a rear or a right lead, long hook, same kind of thing. I throw it out almost like a straight punch but I might dip a little bit, pull my hips a little bit more, and I turn my hand and whip my, my two knuckles with my fist, my thumb pointing down into the target, okay? So again, this is very useful from your stance. If you bait your opponent, and then when they take a step forward or you smack the jab down, and then you do that kind of that quick lead foot pivot, sidestep right so you don't have to put power on it you just kind of whip the punch and it's very effective okay okay body hooks so like I mentioned earlier the body hook has a uh, slightly different mechanic than a normal lead hook to the head it's thrown more like a uh, like an uppercut which we'll cover later okay so from your learning stance to throw a left body hook you lean over the left leg shift your weight and you got this turning, turning motion with your rear foot. Your shoulders come up and back. But you also got your lead leg has this kind of upward, kind of pushing, almost like the trigger step. So you lean over here. You got this turning motion. Um, think of this as closing the door. Bruce Lee called this closing the door, right? And your lead leg, your weight is over your lead leg. Again, try not to go too far over the knee. You lose balance, right? But you, the, your lead leg also can have this little kind of push upward to add power. So you lean over. Boom. There's no pivot on the lead leg. So for your right hook, lean over the right leg. Keep your arm relaxed. You got that almost 90 degree, a little bit greater than 90 degree. It's usually got to go kind of farther than a normal hook. Boom. It's going up and at an angle here. Right? So practice that from your stance as well. Boom. Southpaw. Boom. Right? So that is the standard uh, lead hook to the body and then there is the shovel hook. So the shovel hook is when you're really in close range to get power on your hooks. Well, in close range, you got to get your guard gets a lot tighter, and the, the pace of the fight gets a lot more intense. So you can add a lot of power to short range punches, especially your hooks. You keep your elbow tight to your body. You throw these little, almost like an uppercut hook like that. So the same kind of mechanics as the body hook, but my elbow stays close to my body. Right? So that is the shovel hook. Those are very effective for getting power at close range, okay? All right, so the gazelle hook. The gazelle hook is basically a leaping lead hook, okay? So is it risky? Yeah, but is everything in boxing risky? Yeah, okay? But the, pro the reason, you know, people say it's risky is because you're, you're jumping in, it's telegraphed and all that. But you got to think, like, your opponent's going to have to deal with this power. If you're leaping in for a hook like that, you know, he's got to do something, right? And a lot of times his, his first reaction is not going to be to counter you. He's, he's first got to protect himself because he sees this big leaping punch coming in, right? Even if he throws, you could still catch him and, and rattle him as much as he has the opportunity to rattle you, okay? So it's effective. You see it all the time, okay? But again, you know, you gotta set this stuff up. 
you got to throw with straights and jabs. And then when you see the opportunity, you know, maybe your, opponent, uh, your opponent's moving this direction, you'd be moving right into a lead hook if you could land it. So you lean over your lead leg and you do a shuffle step, right? So we talked about that in the footwork section, in the footwork volume, both volumes. Talk about these shuffle steps. Everything's from this weight shift. So you lean over the lead leg, and as I shuffle, I basically am turning my hips and shifting my weight back to the right leg. But as I do that, I am letting my weight carry, carry me forward, okay? So from your learning stance, go over your left leg and swing your whole body. Shuffle and turn your hips and throw out a lead hook, okay? Okay, for the right hook, it's the same thing. Shift over your right, your right leg, shuffle, and throw your arm out for a hook. Shuffle, and in the air, you turn, right? So you don't really have to go, you don't really have to leap that much, because of the shuffle motion, right? Your back foot lands a split second before your front foot, so you're really not off the ground that long right but it adds a lot of power to your shot okay and like I like I was saying you're gonna land on the back foot you're landing on the back foot first just like your big powerful lead hook to the head you go your weight goes from the lead leg to the rear leg right for that big powerful one same thing here this is a big powerful hook so boom like that okay so after you land this punch now you are probably closer to the opponent than you were before. You just did a big dangerous move, so you gotta do something to kinda uh, keep yourself safe. So a lot of times after you throw this punch, because your weight's kinda on the back foot, you're probably gonna have to dip, and then dip, try to roll, dip, smother in, or dip, and come up and counter after that, okay? So you gotta keep that in mind after you throw this punch. Boom, big wild hook, gazelle hook. Now the next thing I would wanna do is probably dip and then take it from there, okay? Okay, now we have our uppercuts. So this is, um, they're similar to the hooks where there's different ways you can throw them, right? So from my learning stance, if I lean over my left leg and I wanna throw a left uppercut, it's a similar motion to that body hook where it's an upward kinda shifting motion I don't shift my weight all the way back to my other leg I shift my weight my weight up and it comes right back down so if I wanted to throw a left uppercut I can also shift my weight all the way over to my right leg and throw a left uppercut so the same punch different mechanics okay and you can do that with both hands. Lean over the right leg, right uppercut. And I do not shift my weight over. I go right, and I shift right back down, okay? But I can also throw an uppercut where I do shift my weight all the way over, okay? Okay, so from your stance, you got your lead uppercut, you gotta get on the lead foot. Boom, right? And then this can be either to the body, boom, or to the head, boom, boom, right? So these are short punches for the most part, like your hooks. I mean, depending on the situation, just like your hooks, you might extend your arm a little longer to, um, to land the, the punch, but ideally these are considered short punches, okay? Because the, the farther you extend them, the more open you become, okay? So, again, from my stance, I can throw the left uppercut off the front foot. I can throw the left uppercut and shift back to the back foot, right? This might be something useful for a check hook, situation like that, okay? But then you got your rear-handed uppercut. So my rear hand... I got my weight on my rear foot, and I can throw this little uppercut like this. Boom. 
just like from your learning stance or if I wanted to throw maybe a longer range uppercut I can shift over to the lead leg similar mechanics to the uh, rear straight but I'm throwing an uppercut and that can be short that can be a little longer okay okay so ideally your hooks and uppercuts are short medium range punches okay there are like we talked about the hooks there's that kind of snappy long range hook right but you can extend your normal lead hook you know farther out to when you need to land the punch but ideally right these are short to mid range punches cuz the farther you extend them the more open you are you are making yourself right so keep that in mind you know you can practice them at different distances and when you're on the bags you know and in your training you'll get a feel for these but keep in mind that ideally, these are kind of short mid-range punches, okay? Okay, so I post a lot of coordination drills because I think it's really important to make sure you have good um, coordination and body mechanics. That's the whole point of the series, really. Um, and the reason I do that is because boxing is a development sport. So that's a quote from uh, Safe Carmen from Uma Fight Camp. You know, in, in your first six months, you're going to learn all the punches all the slips and the blocks and all the defense and footwork that someone like Floyd Mayweather knows, right? But the difference is that he has taken those same things that you're going to learn in the first six months of boxing, and he has developed them over a lifetime to perfection, okay? So you want to have the same kind of mindset where you are constantly working on coordination and developing your own synchronization between your hands and feet, head, all of that okay so that's that's really what's important for boxing like you know people you know they talk about it it's being so simple yeah it is but it's not at the same time because someone who's been doing this for a year or two is already gonna be way ahead of you if you're a beginner and you're gonna notice if you start sparring people who have more experience that they're just it's like they can read your mind okay right so it's not just a physical development it's a mental development as well all right so think about it you know there's lots of different ways to generate power for punches right um, you got the drop step the trigger step um, just the basic mechanics of the punch shifting your weight turning your hip relaxation right there's all this kinetic chain there's a lot of different things you can do to generate power to your punches. Sometimes you use all of them. Sometimes you just use a combination, right? So you don't really read too much into this, right? You practice these different ways and then they kind of blend together, right? But when I'm talking about coordination, if you think about coordination and having good structure on your punches, right? That's why we want to practice these things slow and focus on body mechanics. You get a lot of power just from the structure of the punch and the coordination. So what I'm talking about is you can lift your leg and practice the coordination between your right hand and your right foot. Right? You would never do this in a fight. But just this coordination, right? The coordination between your feet and your hands and the structure of the punch itself is where a lot of the power comes from. So if you are picking, if you pick up your rear leg, you can throw a rear hand, right? That was with one foot on the ground, right? So that was just from swinging my leg and throwing a punch. There was no really, there's no weight shift at all. I'm standing on one leg, right? So I can throw a left-handed punch, same thing. My right foot is off the ground and I can throw a left-handed punch, right, with decent power and that is just from the structure and body mechanics of these punches, okay? So that's kind of the whole point of this series. We're looking at body mechanics, right? So, um, you know, practice these exercises, a lot of these uh, punching drills from your learning stance, right? Once you can practice these punches individually, 
from your learning stance, you can start chaining them together. Shadow box. From your learning stance, add some defense and flow between your defense, your offense, all your punches. And then you can start moving it around. And then you can do it from your regular stance. You know, do it from your stance standing still. Right? And then you start moving around. Right? So you've got to practice all these things. And it might seem overwhelming, but it's really not too bad because if you just do something like this five minutes a day before bed, right? It's going to help your coordination a lot. All right? All right. So this last topic, this is uh, one more way to add uh, power to your punches. And this seems to be something that comes over time. And um, I don't think people really were really aware of this until uh, fairly recently. I think Mind Smash was the YouTube channel where I first heard someone actually talk about this and give it a name. He called it the Elastic Snap. Okay? I was, but I was rereading uh, Championship Fighting by Jack Dempsey. And he talks about the shoulder whirl, which seems to be a very similar concept. And, um, you know, to me, they're kind of the same thing. Um, it's this idea of keeping your body relaxed. And when you let the energy of the punch go up from your feet to your hips, into your shoulder, if you keep relaxed, you get this kind of snapping, almost whipping motion that can add a lot of power to the punch, okay? So think of guys like Canelo, Archie Moore, Muhammad Ali, um, even MMA guys like uh, Conor McGregor. You know, they they um, they don't always wind up into these really big, powerful punches. Um, especially a guy like Archie Moore, he's really relaxed, and he um, gets these kind of snapping, whipping punches, where his fist actually goes backwards before it shoots forward. Quick handedness that goes back in Michigan. Here are the knockdowns, Larry. The first one was right as the at the bell surprise, but the later one. So that might look like a telegraph, but the, here's the thing. Your opponent doesn't know where the punch is going. It adds a lot of speed. It's almost like a built-in feint. It telegraphs a little bit, but that elastic snap, that shoulder whirl, what it does is it increases the power exponentially. So instead of a linear increase in power where the punch has the same amount of power pretty much throughout the whole arc of the punch, it actually gets faster and more powerful as the punch goes on, okay? So this goes back to like the gazelle hook, right? Your opponent sees you open up real big and he sees this big punch coming, but it's hard to time because it's gonna increase in speed the closer it gets to him. It's gonna increase in power, right? He sees that big wind up, he knows he has to do something, right? He's gotta deal with that power, but these punches land a lot because of that kind of built-in feint where your opponent doesn't really know where it's going or how powerful you're throwing it because the power and speed increases as the punch goes on, right? So he might extend, thinking it's gonna be a big shot to the head, but it arcs down and hits him in the body, right? Or he might extend and the punch goes right around his guard, right? Because again, he's gotta do something about that power, there's a panic, he sticks his hands out, and that big kind of snapping elastic punch goes around the guard, okay? So you can use this kind of elastic snap concept um, on uh, pretty much all your punches, right? You can do it on your straights, your hooks, your uppercuts. So what it looks like is this. So I got my weight on my back foot. As I shift my weight to the front foot, there's like a recoil, right? My fist is not locked in with my hip, right? It is not really locked in with my hip. My hip goes first, and then my shoulders go afterwards. But there's a, a moment 
where my where the um, energy goes up to my shoulder and it's like a recoil like you know they call it an elastic snap because it is like snapping an elastic uh, it's like snapping a rubber band right right so you can throw a punch to cover these elastic snap punches you can throw a feint to cover them too right but like I was saying they're so fast and it's almost like a built-in feint because they are kind of telegraphed but again it's the speed and power that makes them so useful right so the same thing with your hooks so I'm gonna throw a big rear-handed hook my arm kind of goes out hip turn arm snaps out right okay so that's one more way to add power to your punches it's pretty cool it's um again this might be something for someone who's a little more advanced who knows how to kind of pick and choose when to use this but it's something to think about right so watch some mind smash videos he does videos talking about the elastic snap watch some Archie Moore Muhammad Ali and you'll see that they get a lot of power on shots that where it looks like they didn't wind up or they didn't put anything on them and it's because they get a lot of this kind of snapping shoulder whirl kind of motion to their punches okay all right so that was essential movements power punches um just going over the basic body mechanics of your typical kind of boxing punches that aren't the jab right all right so so we're finishing up this series on uh body mechanics uh probably maybe one or two more videos and then we'll be all done with this series so uh, let me know what you think, you know, like the video, sub the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.